It's Reikka Kovasen here today with a live about stencils. I'm going to be working with the new Thinner Bar stencils and sharing, well, quite a few techniques using those. So let's just, well, I'll just wait that you can see and hear me. So. And then let's get started with the actual project. As you can see from this, I'm doing a little bibs or bits from like using different techniques and then bringing it all together in an art journal page in the end. So thank you so much for joining me today and hope you can see and hear if you can just give a thumbs up or write that you can see and hear everything so then we can get started naturally i'm using the finnabar stencils but naturally if you have any other stencils the techniques work the same it's not about the stencils hi diane hi natalie but i'm also wanting to share these beautiful bat patterns with you as the new stencils are gorgeous. Different patterns, vintage. Hey Sato! So a few words in Finnish and then I'll start. Elikä heippa hei, Reikka täällä. Jos on kysymyksiä suomeksi, hei Karita. Kysymyksiä suomeksi tai englanniksi, niin kumpaakin kieltä pystyy käyttämään. Ne voi kirjoitella tuohon, niin mä käyn sitten läpi shown jälkeen, jos sen satun nyt tässä huomaamaan samalla kun tohotan menemään. Muuten käyn tosiaan ne kaikki läpi. Hi Netten! And same in English. If you have any questions, just write them down and I'll go through them after the show. If I don't kind of notice them at the moment, then I'll go through them later. So let's get, let's get started. For the page, I am using something new from Finnabar as well. A new journal. This one is the white one. And then there's the teeny tiny one that has the craft paper or the brown paper inside. And there's several different stencils. Because, well, you can pick up the pattern from this, but I also made a little samples out of each pattern on top of black cards, so you could see the pattern a bit better. So the first thing, I'm going to do a technique on top of the journal, because it needs quite a lot of drying time. So in here I was using this one, I guess. The floral net stencil. Let me pick it up from here. Here, kind of a lace influenced pattern, but with a modern touch in in a way, in a way. So, and the first thing I'm going to do is applying. Oops, sorry. Gel medium through the stencil. As it's really thick and kind of adhesive, working as an adhesive, you really need to clean your stencils after the words. But when it comes to stenciling, the thicker the medium, the better it is for a raised effect, because then you can actually build those kind of dimensional layers. And what's also important is that you go over the design as little as possible because the more you work on an area the more the product might get underneath the stencil and the image is not crisp anymore so this is the first one just well hmm. white on white hard to pick up there it's a bit better but as the gel medium dries clear, it's going to be a recessed layer. You can use same idea using, for example, embossing powder, clear embossing powder, 
but this is also fun because it's such a dimensional thing. So let me move this here to dry for a while. If I need to use then a heat tool, then I have to, but I try to steer away using from using a heat tool with gel medium as it boils so quickly and well if you want that kind of a soft look to it kind of mm, a domed surface then boiling is is the answer but if you want a crisp clear image then do not boil it normally i would take the stencils if i'm using something as sticky as 3d gloss gel i would actually take and wash it but i'm not going to do that right now then let's let that dry for a while and do another one again a thick version something from the finnabar line as well icing paste this is perfect for example to this delicate one that's just scribbles so if you do this in a really fluid medium well it might look interesting but as it's so thin lines you really need a thick medium to get that sorry that crisp image through so icing paste for something like this is perfect so I used the dandelions version in the page, which is this, which is probably my favorite one of these. And then the other one that I like is this laurels version, but they, they all are beautiful. Let me do that because it needs some drying time as well. And then I can show you through all the stencils. So I like to use the silicone brush wet stencils but if you don't have silicone brush you could use a palette knife or even an old hotel key card or credit card or what kind of plus card or what what are they called membership cards Again, the same thing, clean the stencil, but I really love, hi Rainy, I really love this pattern, let me pop that there. So kind of the first technique you can do using stencils is something raised, so you can use the already ready to go products like icing pastes through them to get the raised effect or then you can use the 3d gloss gel and not just for resist effect but you could also mix some glitter in it for example or mix it with acrylic paint to get that colored raised effect but let's go through the stencils now and then I'll show you a couple of more there's actually a bit more techniques that are not included in the page because I was feeling it went too crowded. And some of them might be techniques you haven't used before. Hey, Taro! So this one is called Mind Games. Let me find the sample so you can see it better. Mm, there we go. Kind of a mixture of a gothic script and then just checkered look i first i was like real a little bit bustled by this but this is turning out to be really handy and then the next one is oriental wall kind of old wallpaper look here we go that kind of pattern Hi, Maike. Something that reminds me of my husband's walls when we first met, because he had 
this 70, 70s wallpaper burgundy color. It was really funky. And then gothic. You can never go wrong with a script. Then there's laurels. Another one of my favorites. This is really, really beautiful. Delicate kind of leafy pattern. Then there's read my letter, which I always showed. Really delicate thing. Whoops, this is upside down. Vintage wallpaper. A bit baroque influence in my mind. Then this one is turning out to be my favorite one of the new release, Dandelions. And then the floral net I was using earlier. So those are all, all the different patterns. But let's move on. Let me share something that I'm not repeating because it's a bit hard. But these don't look as much like now. But I've embossed them using just a regular die cutting machine. So instead of putting a folder through the machine, I actually put the stencil and a bit of paper through the machine and get an embossed image. I inked it up a little bit because I'm guessing you can't see anything from there. But it creates this subtle dimensional look just by using the machine. If I would have a silicone mat, the pattern might be better. But even though it's really hard to see just white on white, when you add a medium on top, you can really see the effect the stencil creates just embossed. So that's probably a thing that you might not done before. Another way to use stencils. Then, this other thing might also be a new one. Let me pick Oriental Wall, for example, and put a paper on top. This might be something that you have done as a child, but maybe not afterwards. Just rubbing. This is a regular pencil, so I'm just rubbing on top of the stencil and kind of revealing that pattern that way. Naturally, you could use a colored pencil as well. Or a crayon. I wouldn't recommend using water-soluble crayons because when you add water on top, then the pattern kind of disappears. But another fun way to use the stencil not putting anything through it, but getting the pattern in another way. So that's something. And then, where, there they are. There, and get these water soluble oil pastels. Another piece of paper and instead well if I would try to color as you can see these are a bit too bulky to be used through the stencil but I then colored the stencil with those and as they are water soluble so they react to water this and then hmm, sorry where is my water mister I did there it is just a couple of spritzes of water to kind of react how oh sorry it's not react how how do you sell activate and here we go You can't really see anything with the pencil. Let me 
here we go. It's the pattern. You can can see it naturally. You can see the grains as well, but it does create the pattern in another way. And um, well, here it is. Again, just kind of positive, negative, whatever. The impression of the stencil, not something crude, but using that as a stamp in a way. Let's try also if that works with the Prima inks. Let me quickly clean this one. Well, they are water reactive, so I can clean that one later. And let's use another pa pattern. What about this one? Let's try if I can get it with the inks. I'm adding the water reactive things straight to the stencil, not through it. Then a couple of sprays of water again to activate it. Let's flip it over and then press. Hmm. Works. Not as detailed as this one. As it's kind of crispier. And then this one is more like watercolor. But another way to use stencils, anything that reacts with water, acrylic paints, you could try them, but it's because they dry so quickly and you might not get a good print out of them this way. But anything that reacts with water, because then you can always activate it using the water. So... Now we have a couple of ones, sorry, done. Then let's do just one more. For that I'm using actually a pattern paper from the uh, Pretty Mosaic paper pad. Let me get that one for example. And then kind of a regular way. To use stencils, adding paint, paint through them. I'm using the liquid water, watercolors, not watercolors, acrylics, as I'm using them to color the background. But you could use impasto paints as well, or just inks. Let me get rid of that. Then. The hard part, picking a pattern. Let's use that one. And as you can see, I dipped into the paint and then not straight to the stencil, but removed some of the paint. And then I'll go to the actual piece. Because if I would do it straight away, there would be too much paint. Just a little bit of paint goes a long way. Oops, now I made my stencil. So kind of a traditional way to use a stencil. And again, clean your stencils after use so they last longer. And this one isn't dried yet, so I guess we need to use a heat tool anyway. So I'll just grab that one. Sorry about the noise.
it's not totally dry yet, but hopefully it's dry enough for me to continue. You may notice that I actually tried to dry it from underneath as well to kind of get the layer dry from both sides. Now the middle part probably is still wet as it's white, but let me try if, if this will work because I can imagine it's a bit dull to watch me dry something. So I'm just adding a couple of dots of the liquid acrylics on top. Like so. Then for precautions sake, Move this aside. And maybe put that one over there to guard the actual page. Because then I'll take a water mister and when I push the water, as you can see, the paint kind of goes everywhere. So be careful if you're doing it like this. The other option, if you don't like the spa splatter effect now all over, you can just put some to a palette or a piece of plastic and then pick it up with a paintbrush and then add it to your project. Even though this is acrylic paint so it's sticking on top if I would let it on top of the pattern you can still see the resist effect it has the pattern is created using the stencil and the 3d gel and it soaks into the paper but the gel medium, the 3D gel, is resisting it, so you get the pattern of the stencil working. I don't dare to go over the design that much because I'm afraid that the gel is still too wet, so it might get smushed. Like so. I kind of like this effect that comes from spraying on top of the project. But if you don't like that kind of flickery thingy, then use just put some on top of a palette or a piece of plastic and then use that one to add. Drying again, sorry. If you don't like the bleeding on the other page, because these are quite thick pages, but if you don't like this, then apply a layer of gesso underneath. But remember that it might change the look, because now the ink can actually absorb into the paper right away, so it creates this lovely effect, but if there's gesso on top, it cannot absorb to the paper, so it might change the look totally. So the other option is, if you don't like this effect, work on top of another paper and then adhere it to your journal afterwards. Or then do as I do, just do, do everything and work then accordingly. Like add a piece of paper here or then just Use that at a jumping off point to your next page. Then let's add some splashes. Kind of 
mimicking the same effect that already is going on. We want some darker tones as well, so I'll use the purple one. You can see how the color changes if it's a thick coat, thick concentration lid looks almost black. But when you allow it to kind of move around and bleed, it starts to be the purple tone. If you want to see the actual materials I'm using for this page, they are all in my blog. And I can add the links after the show. Then just something to guide the eye in in so much way. I like to use horizontals and verticals in my creations and something as simple as twine is really 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 easy and well inexpensive way to create either a horizontal or a vertical line this is just black and white twine then I'll staple it in More or less is there. Let me room that. Hello, Wendy. We're doing an, an art journal page here using stencils. I've shared a couple of techniques and now I'm kind of using some of the elements I've done to make the actual page. Then let me get make that. And then I need something at the top. And what about these two ladies? I like these stickers, but I usually adhere them to a piece of paper, so that allows me to create more layers. Um, Karita is asking about the names. This one is magenta, this one is purple, and the yellow one is true yellow. These are just like, what are they called? Pattern scissor scissors? But I thought it would be funny to add a little something next to the vintage photo. So these create a look of a postage stamp. No, here we have the photo. Then let's cut that one a bit. Smaller. It's a little dark, so I don't need that much. So this one is done just rubbing on top of the stencil with a pencil. That one goes there, then we have that one, then we have this one. Like that. Then 
this one goes. Hmm. I want some of the patterns showing. Otherwise, it's... Yep. And that's okay. So I'm building a comp composition in my hand. And then using again the... Whoops. Now it moved. Straight. Stapler to adhere the layers. That one is going to be there. Let's adhere these already. The whole living room table is filled with stuff now. Yeah, actually the vintage photos used to come with a kind of shaped edge. I'm not sure if it's the same as post stitch stamps have. Maybe a bit more like wavy lined. But it's kind of a cabinet card, I think they are called. So it's a fun little detail. Naturally you can just use a paper cutter or scissors to cut it. But I thought that it's a fun little detail. So these are just foam dots I'm using. I could use glue, glue as well, but as the twine is raised, so it probably needs something or then just a piece of cardboard, because otherwise it's kind of rocky on top of the the twine then the photo but before I add the photo in let's add these and have going on which is just thread if you've been watching my shows before you've seen me do this before as this is an easy way to add a little something to the page a little bit of softness or a little bit of interest and kind of bringing another element because we're working on paper and a bit later with metal embellishments so this is a new kind of material new item and I'm not adhering it to the background otherwise to just placing the photo on top because if you really secure something as delicate and well soft as thread then it kind of loses its softness its fluffiness and the lovely effect it has when it's able to go everywhere like so then it's just the final touches with some mechanicals, a couple of brads and a number. But as I had the gold theme going on here, I thought that these don't match the palette. So in comes the handy metallic waxes. This one is vintage gold. So I can just turn everything matchy matchy here we go and that might need another layer afterwards because you can layer the wax but it needs some curing time and then that wording is okay now I'm getting lost with all the stuff here just from the pretty mosaic there's some lovely day but I think I'm going with beautiful dreams because maybe it's a bit dull to have the same saying in both of the pages so let's get that one hmm. I 
about to save that one, but the rays are so long away. So probably I need to trim it away anyway. Just a little banner shape. It doesn't fit. Then it's just beautiful. Not no dreaming. Yeah, that f that one f will fit. A drop of glue underneath. Those are going through the page. Maybe I'll add them first before adhering the number two. So let's think. Let's put one black there, another one there. Okay. Where did I put the there it is. And then third one is going up. Maybe the Paper is it's and it's most vulnerable when it's wet, so that hole could have been a little bit smaller. Now where did I put the mechanical? Sorry, I'm all over the place today. Hmm. It's here somewhere. Probably. Okay, now I'm puzzled. Where did I put it? Well, I'm going to put it here anyway. After I find it from the mess I, I'm now having on top of the <laughs> table. But otherwise, the page is done. Just a really, really easy, easy page. Kind of showing you different ways to use tens stencils. But also kind of when you're experimenting with with a different products or you're just trying out what you can do with stencil or a paint color or anything that's new to you then you can mix and match and use those little bits as an art journal page or make them as a card or ATC or whatever you're kind of doing because you don't have to limit yourself just using a product one way in a project it kind of because the color sheen is same there's the blacks and kind of neutrals a white black and then everything else follows the same color sheen so even though there's kind of a much things going on it all fits in the end and especially in art journaling you just do whatever you like ah found it Perfect. So thank you so much for coming today and seeing this little show. If you have any questions, I'll go through all the comments afterwards, just in about five minutes. And you can always just tag me or mail me or reach me in any any social media I am I'm always happy to help so I hope you liked it such a short little thing I think this one is probably a technique you haven't seen before using stencils as embossing folders but thank you for jo joining me today and have a lovely week
Bye.